Ten minutes in your week with Deacon Tony. God bless you. Good morning and good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you may be. This is Deacon Tony. Sorry I had to take a couple of days from doing any videos. Not that I was sick or anything. I had uh, grandchildren, and uh, they took my time for me, that, which is fine, because that's what I'm there for. My grandfather, I want to thank you, God, right now for giving me this opportunity to come into the living rooms or the desks or the kitchens of those who are servants and even those who are not, Lord, that want to listen in. Oh, Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity. Well, today what I want to talk about is pulpits. Um. I often come in contact with um, the preaching, the teaching from the pulpit, the announcements made at the pulpit. I feel that in many cases, um, there are things that happen on the pulpit. And I'm not saying specifically my church, but I'm saying what I see. Uh, I can't help to see what I see, and what I see is uh, basically um, improper etiquette on the pulpit. Uh, I believe, as the scriptures believe, that not so much the pulpit itself, but the church should be a place where the word of God is evenly divided. What I mean by that, properly interpreted. Uh, on that pulpit. And there shouldn't be shenanigans. There shouldn't be uh, fluff. But uh, the Word of God should abide on that pulpit. Now, the pulpit itself. Now, the pulpit itself is the intricate part of the church as is known from the moments after the, um, the Reformation and, and prior to that. It is said that um, in Scripture, it says that, uh, well, should I should say the history of the church, pulpit. Pulpit comes directly from the Latin word pulpintum, means platform or staging. One of the earliest references to the pulpit comes from the epistle, a letter from the Cyprian around A.D. 250. Now, what we also understand is this, that uh, there was some form of pulpit that was first preached in the Old Testament. We can read that from Solomon, preached from a brazen scoffer in Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 13. And it stood wooden step to preach in Nehemiah 8, 4. Jesus never seemed to have used the pulpit. But in Europe, during the Middle Ages, early as 550, 600 AD, preachers stood at the pulpit so they could be better understood by the Renaissance in the 1500s. Pulpits had sounding boards, structures sort to like to show around the old-fashioned bandstand. Sometimes that we see in parks, that's where bandstand, the sounding board of the pulpit was intended to reflect the sound towards the people. Now, that's a historical account. Um, but the gist of this is that the pulpit was important enough to make sure that the word of God was let out. Focal point, the preaching of the word. We know on the pulpit we have expository preaching. That means uh, there's a word and we find a definition of the word and we're able to understand the scriptures in that way. Because we have English language that it dates maybe uh, 1100 years whereas Hebrew is uh, close to 6,000, maybe 5,000 years old. Uh, and Greek is, is, is almost about the same time. So the Pope is, is an intricate part of the church um, in its progress, in its progression, due to the fact that it's where we um, expositor, the, the word of God, maybe that's not the right word, but we give 
the word. We understand the word. We regurgitate the word constantly. So can we remember, even though the spirit of God brings it to rem memory, you have to have something to bring back to memory. And so what I do not like, either you're a expository preacher, a topical preacher, a historical preacher, uh, it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is the information given out from the pulpit, right? Uh, what's important? Well, I'm going to give you quite a few examples on this um, 10 minutes in your in your week. I'm going to give you an example of that right now. Just give me a minute. And so, and so this is what I would like to share with you guys. To me, it's, uh, it's quite disturbing. See if I could put this up a little bit. Oh, sorry about that. That's not what I was looking to do. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. This woman, she's been caught up in uh, adulterous, fornicative affair with assistant district attorney or agent or whatever she may call. Now she's in the church. That's a pulpit. That's a holy pulpit for the word of God. For the announcements of the church. And I gotta indicate to you guys that the pulpit should be just for that. Not even for announcements. There are other churches in 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 their history, in their uh traditions where they have place where you do special announcements. But the Pope should be one that is holy, that's kept for delivering the word of God, but not to speak about your sin. If there's any place that needs you need to do a speak about your sins, should be in repentance in the house of God, publicly before the Lord. The Lord says, if you confess of me publicly, before men, I will be. I will publicly announce you amongst the angels. So, this in itself is a tragedy in the church, and it happens to go along the lines of of cultural churches, churches of color. You know, uh, I think is 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 um, despicable. I think it's destroying the church. You know, if we find righteousness within color then why even bother having church? Why don't we have a club, you know, a cultural club or color club, if that's the case? How can we plead to a God who's spirit when we came and deal with color, you know? Um, and, and so that's just, that's just one of them. I feel that it's, it's horrible. It's is is a, a thing that should not take place, but nevertheless, um, you know that's that's the problem. I believe with the church is that when we start trying to make things holy and acceptable, when they're not holy and acceptable, this is what happens. This is what happens, and so. Um, I sense uh, um, the church is destroying itself. When you have a person like uh, Governor Hochul, who we know as an extreme uh, abortionist, and it's contrary to the church, and you have to come to your church and preach about, um, you know, the prick. And um, 
and she wants to gather up apostles. I think it's sent front to the church. But again, it's also an alliance of, of people of color, uh, which I find it to be a tragedy. So I want, want to show you is this video, which uh, happened about you know, two years ago. Uh, it's Governor Hochul. Also, I call Ho Chi Mama. Um, I find her despicable, shameful. She's a uh, she's a cheerleader for abortion. I'm a cheerleader for life. So let's look. Let's, let's see this video because I think it will tell you all that you should know. One another. And how do you show that love, but to care about each other enough to say, please get vaccinated because I love you. I want you to live. I want our kids to be safe when they're in schools. I want you to be safe when you go to a doctor's office or to a hospital and are treated by somebody. You don't want to get the virus from them. You're already sick or you wouldn't be there. We have to solve this, my friends. I need every one of you. I need you to let them know that this is how we can fight this pandemic come back to normal, and then start talking about the real issues that we have to, fighting systemic racial injustice, which exists today. And if there's a dot denier, they're who aren't listening to God and what God wants. You know this. You know who they are. I need you to be my apostles. That to me is blasphemy. There's only one holy call, only, only one objective in Christianity, and that's across the board. And that's Jesus, Jesus Christ, birth, life, death, and resurrection. Anything outside of that, on that pulpit, it is blasphemy. I consider it blasphemy. And anyone who does that, whether black or Hispanic, white, it's blasphemy. The Pope is a holy place. You know, I came to the Lord at 24 years old, close to 23, really. And here I am sitting here, I'm 60 years old. And I revered the pulpit whenever um, something had to be moved on, on, on the podium next to the pulpit, I would kiss the floor because I consider that a place where the word of God is even divided. And when I see that, uh, it's, it's abuse and, and, and really just taken advantage of, it, it sickens me to the point where I feel almost uh, such a, great emotion because the pulpit is a holy place. It's a place where the word of God is preached. Uh, the word is given. It's, uh, the, the word of God is, 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 is spoken about, is taught about. Um, but to take it as a place where you know, mind you, I'm, I'm into politics. I know politics, but just a place. The pulpit is just not that place. Um, and so when I see that now, now don't get me wrong. I feel that if uh, the man of God, like a man of Martin Luther King had a calling to do things outside the church, obviously, uh, when we, and, and, and he brought, the message on the pulpit. It was an important message. It was a message that took his life. And so I find it to be a holy thing. Whenever you bring liberty in Christ's name to men, um, it is a great thing, but it's a great cause. And it's done on the pulpit. But this woman coming on the pulpit talking about her extramarital or adulterous lifestyle, and she comes to plead before the church, 
and people are held in emotions because it happens to be of the same color, I think it's a tragedy and it's going to destroy the church. It's going to destroy the church. And all you have left will be your color. Not salvation, but your color. And I've seen so many people leave the church because church uh, is not addressing their political or their racial uh, um, undertones. And so they leave. I, I've known that for myself. I've seen it for myself because it's not being addressed. Um, but the pulpit of God is holy and is set aside before the Lord for the preaching of the word, expounding on his scriptures. And yeah, those coming to the Lord. So with that, I, I, I just, you know, I just don't quite understand it. The, the thirst that people have to desecrate the pulpit. I have no understanding why they do that. So with that, I would just want to leave you guys with this. Serve the Lord with all your heart. And the Lord would lead you to the things that need to be led to. I found in my life that uh, son of a man who uh, basically had no uh, interaction with his children, kept himself away for many, many, many years. And I vowed before the Lord that if he would uh, keep me in his salvation, which he has done greatly, that he would make me a father that my father was never. And so that I am. And he is a man who's been married for 30 odd years and has two grown daughters and five grandchildren. I am blessed. I am thankful that the Lord has bestowed upon me um, progeny, uh, spiritual progeny. Father, I want to thank you. Father, I thank you and ask you to bind every spirit and every demon, put them underneath the cross of Jesus Christ, that they may know their eternal defeat. Father, I pray for each and every member out there who uh, sees this video and hopefully takes into heart the importance of the pulpit and the what we could do to better it and keep it holy before the Lord. Father, I thank you. And I ask you to bless each and every one who has seen this video and those who, who love you, Lord, and those who are coming to you. Father, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.